All right, hey guys. Today, we're taking a little bit of a walk that starts in a forest but dumps us into a city super quickly. Right now, we are out in the area of Kagoshima and I was originally gonna start this live stream up there you see about a 15 20 minute hike up this mountain is a beautiful viewpoint that would allow us to see the entire city but i also didn't want to walk 20 30 minutes through a forest on the live stream so in order to keep things visually entertaining and appealing we're going to start with this tunnel right here and i'm going to try not to fall down <laughs> on this rock here so I've come back out to Kagoshima for a brief two-day visit to create some quick content for you guys as well as to do a radio show and a separate live stream out here. And while we're here, I thought it would probably be awesome if we had a chance to learn a little bit about the city of Kagoshima, which has an amazing history like this was once the pirate capital of japan this area is known for how strong the locals are it's known for its food it's known for many things in fact behind that building there you can't see it is sakurajima japan's most active volcano but before i get too too sidetracked i want to introduce that we have a little bit of a guest with us today a kagoshima local who's been living here for I don't, you know, we'll get into how many years in a second. You may have seen him in the behind the scenes of the Sakurajima documentary. I'm here with Mitch. Hi guys. Hi Mitch. Hi Norm. How long have you been in Japan, Mitch? 15 years. 15, have you been in Kagoshima the, the whole time? The time, yeah, wow. the whole time. Can we start by walking through this? Yeah, yeah. It's this is hard. awesome. So, Mitch is actually the one who turned me on to this path up here and said that if we go all the way up, we have this beautiful, beautiful view of the city. Look at these stairs. I don't know why I'm already so excited about this staircase here. So Mitch used to have his own TV show yeah, here. I was on TV, yeah. I was a local talent or whatever. Uh -huh. They basically made the white boy do a bunch of things and laughed at me, it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Okay, I'm gonna try not to die here, okay. but but like it i mean it was fun to be on tv you know um oh, just actually to, to just to introduce us myself a little bit i'm actually uh. quarter japanese my mom was born and raised in japan okay and so that's what brought me here uh. and then when they they found out that like i could speak japanese the t tv station was like can you go on tv and eat stuff and i was like <laughs> sure <laughs> all right so you became the guy who went on tv and, and ate, ate stuff. stuff yes that is by far a much better introduction than I think I gave you in the YouTube video. <laughs> so thank you for that. Mitch has actually turned me on to some really amazing backstreet areas here. And so today we're going to hunt the back streets of Kagoshima City as we talk about the area, as we talk about the locals, the history. Yeah. I'm just shooting this on an action cam now. So if the wind picks up and kind of takes over, I do apologize. It's not going to be the best audio but we're gonna try and make the best of it. I just wanna tell your viewers, Norm, that you're currently carrying about 40 kilograms of camera equipment in your backpack <laughs> as you're hiking down a mountain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I basically, I'm carrying everything I have on me in this one little bag, so. And uh, which way did we come from? I don't even remember. Well, we're gonna to wanna to go down here and then turn around to the left. Okay. And so lifestyle out here in Kagoshima is unique for a couple different reasons one of the biggest reasons being the volcano <laughs> that is literally just across the water there it's not even that far how many it's kilometers three, would you say three-ish kilometers from this side okay and then the crater is about i think six kilometers or something like that from the from the shore jeez sakurajima is known as a decade volcano it's one of 10 most active and most dangerous volcanoes in the world wonderful there's, there's over half a million people living within the like kind of like the the glass zone i guess wow and so it's uh it's a very active and very ganky very like what do you say like healthy volcano <laughs> mm. you know i uh in releasing the documentary about the volcano quite a few people actually commented on it 
and who were from Kagoshima. Yeah. And everyone shared really interesting experiences. I'd say the vast majority of the people, there was, ah, there it is. I wanted to show this. Ah. The vast majority of the people talked about how even here in Kagoshima City, this is one of the things that makes life difficult. Uh, Mitch, do you want to explain a little bit about what we have here? So these are like the ash bags and what we do is because the volcano is always raining ash down on the city um, We have to it actually is kind of a nuisance. It'll pl uh, clog up uh, plumbing and stuff like that huh. So you're not supposed to wash the ash into the drains Okay, what you're supposed to do is sweep it into a pile and put it in these yellow bags uh -huh. as you can see They ran out of yellow bags. So I think they just use their own stuff Yeah, but they put these yellow bags here and then the city comes around and picks them up every so often Okay, and then they say that they recycle the ash into useful products but I don't know how much of that is true so I think one of the most interesting things I don't want to touch any of the bags right now but the kanji on the bag says overcoming the ash right. and I really there's just there's something really hopeful about the way that that you know what I mean the way it's written so we we like to think of Sakurajima as being our friend like uh -huh. who's beautiful and in the city with us but at the same time our friend likes to make it messy here sometimes especially <laughs> when it's like a really big like a really really big eruption it'll cover the entire city in about two or three inches of ash that is a lot of ash and so when that happens it's you do have to overcome it it's it's not easy <laughs> Uh, it's just gonna cross over so we can give this gentleman his space and he crossed over actually one of the things I love um, From the viewpoint up there is looking down and seeing this giant tori gate yeah. from above through the city You can actually see the area we were gonna climb up to up there, but again <laughs> lots of walking heavy bag so. so during the Showa era, the Japanese, uh, Japanese government and a lot of like privately <clears throat> wealthy people built a bunch of concrete tori gates in Japan. Okay. And there's actually, it's actually kind of a problem because in some areas they actually don't know who owns the tori gates anymore. Really? Yeah. So they're just like, there's this, and then sometimes they're, out, they're out of, they're out of repair. Uh -huh. And so they're like the, the local governments want to have the tori gates repaired. But like they can't because they don't know who the owners are. Obviously, you know Whoa. who the owner of this one is. It's the uh, Terukuni Shrine that's next to it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, these all popped up yeah. mostly in the Showa era. Wow. <laughs> and as Mitch and I were walking down here, we came across this building right here. Even Googled it yeah. and still can't figure out what it is. It is a beautiful building though. So we have a couple of these buildings that were made in a very kind of like European style during the Meiji era. Uh -huh. And I'm actually, I'm sorry, I'm going to be a bad guy today. I don't know what this building is for or what it was for. <laughs> that but, is but okay. Near here, there's the old town hall and things like that. And so basically it's probably some sort of governmental or official building. I think the thing that I love about it the most is you have the pond over here. With koi in it. You have the beautiful tori gate here. You've got this gorgeous building over here and then over here you just have this random basketball court yeah where i play basketball with uh my former students before <laughs> <laughs> so i love the layout of it yeah so so in the, this little river here flows from the shrine and around <gasps> towards the park it's a little man-made river just, uh -huh. you know because in Japanese uh, gardens or in, in scenic areas, they always want to hear the running water is really important. Okay. And so you can see the giant overfed koi in there, uh. which koi, uh, I don't think a lot of people know, are just basically carp that we see <laughs> in North America, but uh. they're just beautiful colored carp. Okay. <laughs> and we finally have some information on the building. Oh, there you go. It's called the rare stone building, apparently. <laughs> and if you want to pause and do a screen grab and read that, Go for it. Okay. Sure. Moving on. I love the English on that. The neo Gothic architecture style quickly became the talk of the town. <laughs> <laughs> it quickly became the talk of the town. Hello, pigeon. And so now we're actually going to get right into Kagoshima City. And the area that we're going to walk out to that has some really beautiful, like really narrow, tiny, cool back streets. We'll talk about it more when we get there, but it used to be like the main entertainment district or red light district, if you will, of the time. But between here and there, there's actually a lot of really beautiful Kagoshima city. So we're gonna start up here, go through this park, and then start getting into the back streets. We've got a guy doing the BMX bicycle over here at the park. 
So the, when a lot of people think about Japan, they usually think about like Tokyo or Osaka with giant towers and everything. Huh. Kagoshima actually has an ordinance where you can't build buildings over a certain height. I think this mansion tower here, this condo tower, is like almost max height. Really? Yeah. So you can't build buildings over that height because they, it's illegal to block the view of the, the volcano. Oh, wow. Okay. So you see a lot of like kind of sprawl that we would see in more Western countries. Yeah. And so it has a more like Western feel to the city here. Oh. And there's also a lot of uh, Western influences in Kagoshima. Uh, for example, Catholicism entered Japan through Kagoshima. So there's actually a, a, a Catholic church that's just across over there, Xavier Catholic Church. And it's where Mr. Xavier came and brought uh, Catholicism to Japan. Wow. It's actually the landing point of it. And there's also evidence to suggest that Kagoshima was the landing point for Buddhism as well. But not here, a little bit further down south from here. See, this this is why I brought you into this live stream. This live stream is very quickly turning into a live stream walk podcast <laughs> as we learn about the area of Kagoshima. So, and I was, I was going to say something for the life of me. I can't remember. Okay. I got really into listening to that. Right. So this um. park is the central park here in Kagoshima, uh, the downtown area. Okay. It serves three purposes. One, it's a park, obviously. Two, it's, a, it's the cover for a two-story uh, parking garage. It's okay. So There's a two-story parking garage under in the here. Under this. Okay. And then the third thing it serves is an evacuation zone in cases of earthquakes, uh, tsunamis, and volcanic eruptions. Wow. Okay. So people come here now. I don't know if it's a good idea to stand on top of a two-story uh, garage on an earthquake, but they tell you to come here. Wow. Well, I guess it would be built deep enough. Yeah, yeah. So as long as the upper supporting structure is strong enough, and again, we would have Sakurajima volcano right behind here every time i look at this all i can think is how much i want to fly an fpv drone through this <laughs> just zoom, just whip right through how, how's your FP, fpv drone going by the way not too bad i did this guy's walking along with us i did a uh, a bit of a camping trip last week and i crashed and destroyed it three times in what? the middle of the camping trip i actually had to run out to the dollar store to get a specialized set of smaller tools that I could use so to could repair, repair it. it? Oh, yeah. Gosh. So. So next to the park here is actually a, a, a Buddhist temple. Okay. Um, and an interesting fact about this particular type of Buddhist sect is that the monks aren't required to shave their heads. Okay. So the monks are like, okay. So in Japan, like monks are seen as being like, you know, kind of cool, right? Because okay. you know they're they're you know kind of an authority figure. They they seem to have like some sort of mysticism about them. And the fact that the guys in this particular uh, uh, temple can have their hair, they just like a bunch of good looking guys. <laughs> and they're super popular with the women. It's like, <laughs> it's kind of interesting. Not what you imagine from monks. Right. And I... the thing is, they can also drink. So they go out in wow. like Izakais and stuff like that. I've actually drank with them before. They're super popular. <sighs> I, uh, as soon as you started talking about that, I just started imagining all these like long hair rock and roll monks. <laughs> So. The funny thing is, they actually have a band. They have, they have a, a monk uh, rock band, and they—I uh, mean, obviously, right now, during the situation, and everything, they're not like performing. But when it, you know, when everything gets better, they're uh -huh. going to be like jamming out in like you know, in this park actually, and they do it in their monk garb. Really? Yeah, it's so funny. The rock band of monks. Yeah, and they're actually go. really good guys. Like, we should hang out one of these days. See, a hundred percent. I know I'm just repeating myself, but like. This is exactly why I was like, oh, I gotta take a, a walk with Mitch and have him. You can actually see a little bit of the volcano here. You can. There you go. So off in the distance there, you can see the tip of, it's not smoking today. Yeah, today it seems to be pretty quiet. It, it really goes through moods. And the thing is, is like, uh, we, I watched your documentary that, by the way, fantastic documentary. <laughs> um, one thing that uh, I wanted to add to it is that on the news uh, every day in the morning, they have like rain, is it windy, whatever. Yeah. They also have like a map of the area with Sakurajima in the middle of it, and they show where the ash will go if it erupts. Okay. So due to the winds and everything like that. So the reason why they do that is in case like you're in the danger zone, they, you don't put your clothes outside uh. to dry them. That was actually one of the most common comments that I got from Kagoshima locals who had watched the documentary is that the, the documentary was nice and all that. Your documentary the, was fantastic. <laughs> the Cat, one, Cat Lady is my favorite. She is absolutely awesome. I actually, 
the small part of me was like, if I have extra time, I'm going to go back and visit her. Help her feed cats. <laughs> Just help her feed Can cats. Can I tell you how God signed his like graces upon you with the meow? Oh, she, I know. <laughs> you caught like, that, she eh? She like, you know, these cats, they have feelings too. And then the cat goes, meow. I was just like, <laughs> right? <laughs> Norm, what? <laughs> yeah, I got really lucky with that. That was fantastic timing. But the uh, the locals who commented on the video, everyone says that even here in Kagoshima City, you can't just hang your laundry. You yeah. gotta put it inside. It's, it's actually a lot of work to dry your laundry. So what we're doing these days is, yeah, we hang them inside with a dehumidifier. Yeah. Because dryers just aren't a thing here in Japan. Yeah. Um, it, traditionally speaking, like uh, the traditional household in Japan, you know, I have the father who goes to work and the mother who stays home and raises the children. And so there's a little bit still even today in the culture about how the, a good housewife does uh, certain jobs. Uh -huh. Having automatic dishwashers or a dryer or something like that was kind of not really seen as a good thing before. Okay. So that's why a lot of people hang up their, their, their laundry, but we can't really do it here in Kagoshima, unfortunately. So this is a, a, a what you call it, kindergarten that's okay. associated with the, uh, with the temple. That's really common in Japan as well too, right? Having them like directly connected to each other. So um, the, when the religions came into Japan um, after the isolation period, or actually, sorry, before the isolation period, um, what happened was is that the, especially the Catholic Church, uh -huh. started making like educational facilities. Okay. And so it just became this kind of historical norm, especially after the, the isolation period ended and everything like that, and the religion became more free, uh -huh. to, to, to have educational facilities associated with churches or temples. Uh -huh. um, weirdly enough, you never see that with shrines. Uh -huh. uh, Shinto shrines rarely ever have like a, a, like a kindergarten or whatever. It's usually a temple or a church. Uh -huh. So um, weirdly enough, even though like the amount of like uh, self-proclaimed Christians in Japan, I think is like less than one or two percent or something like that. Uh, almost everybody that I know have gone to a Christian kindergarten. Wow. Yeah. And so they know a lot about the, the, the culture, even if they don't practice it or believe it. It's very <laughs> interesting. It's amazing that even being in the exact same Japan, <laughs> that just changing locations can change things that much, especially like you know, Kagoshima, this entire area in Kyushu was a huge entry point for foreign influence due to the shipping routes and when Japan opened it happening in this area. And so the culture down here, aside from the landscape itself being very different and very beautiful to the rest of Japan, the culture itself is actually... Uh, more Western refined and yeah. not refined but it is, it is unique yeah. it is influenced yeah. it is defined yeah. it is it's got it's got an edge to it so. so if you look at japan the most southern tip of japan aside from like okinawa and the little island uh -huh. is kagoshima is the southern tip of kyushu uh -huh. and so naturally as ships came from uh europe and around the horn of africa and up towards asia they would naturally find themselves like landing in uh, Kyushu and Kagoshima. Uh. And so that's why Kagoshima is the entry point to Christianity. It's also the entry point for guns. Uh, be back before, uh, I don't remember how many years ago, but when guns first entered Japan, they came in through Kagoshima and then also through Tanegashima, which is a little island that's near here. Uh. And then when the, uh, when the country in change, the isolation period started, um, all of the uh, the feudal lords throughout the, the the country obeyed, basically obeyed what the central government said, which was to close the country to out, out, outside influence. Like, uh, Shimazu in Kagoshima. Oh. Actually, as, as we go here, yeah. don't forget that point. As we go here, the last time I was here, you pointed out something that I wanted to put in the documentary. Uh, this? And I, yeah, and I didn't manage to squeeze it in. So, it's... The simplest little thing, seemingly innocuous, it is the grass under the tramway here. And apparently that's made entirely possible because of the volcanic pumice, is it? So a lot of, a lot of places tried to do this because it looks great, right? Um, and then, but this was one of the only regions in Japan that was able to do it because they use pumice, uh, it's called shirasu, okay. uh, pumice uh, bricks that they line the bottom of the grass with. Okay. And that does something with the absorption of the water where it doesn't flood out the grass and so it stays alive. Huh. And so that's why, like, even, like, a lot of places want to do this. And then the tiles that are un under this grass is actually technology that they're trying to market from this area to foreign countries like Dubai. Wow. They actually went to Dubai, like, two years ago and had a giant, like, uh, like presentation on their pumice products. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. Actually, okay, I want to get back to what you were saying before, but there were 
two things. We'll focus on one for now. Okay. That a lot of people asked about the volcanic ash falling. Yeah. Now, Kushima-san, the, the expert, yes. had kind of addressed it when he said, you know, people don't really go out when it's when it's coming down. Yeah. But it's more like a, a sand than anything else. But the single most common question, are we going this way? Yeah, this way. Okay. The single most common question that I think I got that I hadn't addressed in the documentary was, do people have health issues because of the ash? So now I was concerned about this because obviously I'm a, I'm a lifer here, like I'm gonna live here forever. And so I was kind of curious about this when I first moved here. Uh -huh. And I asked the doctors and there was conflicting information about this. Okay. If you go on like, um, like WebMD or something like that, it says that volcanic ash is very toxic and very dangerous for you. Uh -huh. But when I asked local doctors here, they said that the size of the ass is too big to get into the tissue of your lungs. Okay. So it's kind of like sand in the desert. Okay. Where I'm from Las Vegas, uh -huh. so it's no difference for me. Are we there? We're here. So this is Maison Bori. Uh, Maison used to be... Is that in? This is it. It's Most of the shops are going to be closed right now because it's daytime. Uh -huh. So if you come back at nighttime, it's going to be like hopping with little bars and everything. But this used to be the red light district of... Uh, of Kagoshima because the city hall, uh -huh. the prefectural building, and the local newspaper were all here, like right next to here. Okay. So, um, we, this used to be like kind of like the red light entertainment night district where the government officials and the media would like get together and have drinks and stuff like that. Mm. Then, when the prefecture building moved and the newspaper also left, uh, the this local area here kind of died. Okay. And so then the place that we were kind of just passing by before Temon Kan became like the new, which is about about you know half a kilometer from here. Yeah. Became like the new like red light entertainment district. Oh. So then this place kind of died for a few decades in the sh after the Showa era in, into the uh, into the Heisei era. And then, as things do, they get gentrified, and so like people started remembering how cool this place was. Huh. And so you can see here, there's actually a brand new building right here. Yeah, yeah. Um, so people came in, and they started like reforming and retrofitting the buildings, and people live here on the second. Because traditionally, let me go here. So <laughs> this would be like a, a store, uh -huh. like a nomiya, like a place where you drink, and there'd be like a mama-san or something there. And then she'd live up here. Okay. So this is the system that they have here. And so people thought this is cool. So uh, now, like, and as you can see, enormous dunking together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's like it's just right there, right? Yeah. So this was meant for uh, people from a different time. Um, I, I mean, I could get into like the average height in Japan increasing after the war and everything like that. But before, people were a lot shorter, so like buildings were made a lot smaller. And one of the things that I notice a lot more of in so you were talking about the Temmonkang area. Yeah. So back there, over that way, you guys may have noticed in the video that there were a lot of awnings. And in fact, there's a lot of covered arcade walkways in this area too. Those are called Shotengai in Japan. But the thing that you'll notice is the insane amount of awnings. And again, it's just one of those things that is a part of the lifestyle. If you were to go out to somewhere like Shikoku and you would go to Kochi or Matsuyama or something, you will find Shotengai, you'll find them in Tokyo. But so much of Kagoshima City is just interconnected via Shotengai in the same way that Sapporo is actually interconnected with an underground walkway that you can get out from the cold and the snow and everything. This area is interconnected with this Shotengai covered walk for the ash. Right? Yeah, so yeah. with uh, Sapporo, it's for the snow, right? Yeah. It's for practical reasons. You don't want to die because it's so cold. <laughs> but then in uh, Kagoshima here, as you can see, there's some locals out. Oh, mm. that's actually a really cool retro figure. You want to check it out? Yeah, let's go. Um, and so uh, here, it's the ash that you have to avoid. Mm. Um, and also monsoon rains as, as well, like during rainy season, stuff like that. So, so as you can see, there's like a little bar like this. It's very common here in, uh, in Maison Boy. This one happens to be open. But maybe this is actually Ramiyasa. It's a Ramiyasa. So this is like a little Ramiyasa. Um, and it's like, it's the quintessential Ramiyasa as well with the... <laughs> I love this. See <laughs> Let's walk down this one here. It seems very lively. So if you guys have a chance to come here in Kagoshima, this Spanish bar here is actually really cool. Okay. It's run by a Japanese guy and it's really cool. A lot of the local businesses around here come here for lunch and stuff like that too. Mm. So it's it's like kind of popular for lunch. And then it's also 
tour tourists don't really find themselves here because it's kind of off the beaten track. Mm. Which I think Norm is your forte. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what it's at? Yeah, it's like a uh, Kagoshima Prefecture. Yeah. So when Mitch was first talking to me about Kagoshima, we talked about how when I was on Sakurajima, which is right here, Jima means island, but it was connected by the eruption. And in this area, it didn't matter how much I flew the drone, there was no wind. And Mitch got a big smile on his face, and he was like, it's because it's a pair of pants. <laughs> <laughs> so. so wind does come up through here a little bit, but mostly like the mountainous region here and here basically block it, make it a very peaceful bay. Mm -hmm. Also, we launch rockets from here. That's something I want to come back for. Actually, quite a few people had asked if I'd be able to come back and do the uh, the JAXA uh, yeah. Center there's at some two, point. Right? There's one here that's actually on the mainland, and there's one on Tanegashima, the island. That one's more active than the one that's on the island. Because to launch a rocket, you need two things. You need to be in a peaceful country with technology in order, in order to make rockets. And two, you need to be by the equator. Because mm. the, the closer you are to the equator, the easier it is to escape uh, the uh, gravity of Earth. And that's another thing that I think a lot of people don't realize about this area, about Kagoshima and whatnot, is actually how much closer to the equator it is and how close to, I wouldn't say being tropical, but how much more, there's another bag of Kazanbai, uh, how much the, the weather and whatnot is different from other areas of Japan. So you think of Sakura season, the, the cherry blossom season, uh, you know, we have like little boutique shops here. It's like a, it's like an old timey dagashia that was once open and now is selling their remaining products. They have like four things left. Yeah, next door is also open. They have like the old uh, toys and stuff like that from the show. Era. Wow, when is the last time? I don't... Okay, did you have these when you were a kid? No. These airplanes? No. Oh, I loved these airplanes when I was a kid. My grandfather used to take me to air shows all the time. Really? And uh, you could also just get those at like the local shops and stuff. I feel like we keep getting deep into topics and then I get distracted by something in front of me. <laughs> cool. uh, I want to go back to what I was talking about before about how, yeah, yeah. like, so Europeans would come up south from the south to Kagoshima. Yes. And so this just became a natural trade place. And during the isolation period, the feudal lord here, Shimazu, said F you to the, the, the national government and okay. continued to trade with the West in oh. secret. Really? Yeah, so they had like cannons and stuff here. Actually, Kagoshima went to war with England for a day. <laughs> for a day? Yeah, and claimed victory because uh, they shot, they exchanged cannon fire, basically, from a ship to, to the city. And uh, the city actually ended up killing, I think, two of their sailors or something like that. This is like, I don't know, 100 some odd years ago. And then so Kagoshima claimed victory over England. <laughs> <laughs> it's called the Sino something war. I forgot what it's called, but yeah. And it was a day. Yeah, it's a day. In, in Japanese, they call it a war. In English, we, they call it an incident. An incident. So, <laughs> take, take what you will from that. <laughs> Slightly different classifications there. So now one thing that I think people really enjoy is a lot of the back streets. So maybe let's head into some of those. Okay. Be a little quieter. This sign might be one of my new favorite things ever. It's not no veggie, no life. It's no, no life, life, no, no veggie. veggie. It's, it's technically accurate, I suppose. <laughs> well, if you don't have a life, you don't have vegetables either, right? Right? So, there, there, there's some truth in that. I love the mix of like, okay, so you've got the, the semi-stucco-styled walls here on this building, followed by the red bricks here, the brown bricks here, the just cement walls over here. There's zero consistency and I oddly love it. So I lived in the Asakusa area yeah. of Tokyo for the better part of a decade. And Mitch is pointing out that I've totally missed a back street, so yeah. we'll go this way. And a lot of the Asakusa area is filled with little spots like this. But I've walked through them all so many times that they become second nature to me. So uh. when I find a place like this that's new, that's awesome, it's got these narrow little back streets, I love being able to come out and explore. The last time I was here, um, I came here with uh, like a like a kind of a big business guy, and he literally woke up the mama son who was living on the second floor oh. and said, "Can you please open your bar from like the afternoon?" And she like got dressed and opened the bar for us. <laughs> it's the kind of environment we're in. That is amazing. Now, one thing that I always did enjoy about wow, look at these lanterns. They oh, they wow. are dated. They've been here a couple days at least. <laughs> look at this. Uh, that lantern has seen some stuff, I will tell you that. The uh, the thing that I always loved about the Asakusa area 
is they is there's a type of people out there that they call Edoko. Okay. And they're basically, you know, the, the, the children of Edo, if you will. Ah. And they are harsh and loud and strong and vulgar. And I went into a, uh, a tonkatsu shop once. And have you ever seen the movie Kill Bill? Yes. It was basically Kill Bill. The samurai sword scene? No, it was more like there was a, uh, there was a young guy who was up at the front and he yelled back he's like mama <laughs> and she just yells back at him she's like don't be lazy do the work and he's like i don't speak english though and she's like when did i learn english <laughs> and, they got in, and they're just yelling back and forth at each other and it's like the tone and how they're yelling yeah. is very very and I just, I fell in love with that shop. I think I ended up going like probably 20 times, <laughs> at least twice a year. Just love it. I think that's one of the great things about Japan is you just find like the, the shop owner that you really, really like. Mm. And then after that, you just keep going to that place. It's like your place. I have questions. Okay. About what lemon gas is. Uh, it's just the company name. It's, it's, <laughs> it's so anticlimactic. Sorry. It's just the company just name. name. It's a different company. So, okay, I recently did a live stream where I talked about by far one of the weirdest products that I think Japan has to offer. Which is what? Have you ever seen the lemon milk? Oh, yes. Why would they put those two things together? Why would lemon and... What? Why? Well, yeah. Have you ever seen the strawberry sandwiches? Yeah, oh my, the, 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 you mean the front only strawberry sandwiches? <laughs> Where like, when you look at it in the convenience store, it's like, amazing. Oh, this looks awesome. And then you open it up and it's like uh, slices of strawberry. We'll go this way. There's a little park over here that might be fun. Okay. Um, Can but, we take back streets to it? Yeah, sure. Well, it's just right there, but. Oh, uh, then we can get back quick. streets over there if you want to. All right. So, getting back to the Sakurajima documentary, how was it like to spend an entire week on an active volcano? Did you feel, like, scared when you first started that? Honestly, like, because I went into it and I had heard so much about the area and everything from you, I wouldn't say I was particularly scared. I'm also really curious about Parking this inside the shop. random shop that's just got a Benz parked right inside of it. So, so. the reason why that happens is because these people own these shops uh. and they don't want to pay for a parking space somewhere, so they just like realize that they can park their car inside the shop. There you go. <laughs> and so, I came into it not feeling as afraid as I might, yeah. but it was interesting to talk to some of the locals and like, there was the one gentleman who bought me coffee and he was so friendly he was awesome he was just spectacular and he asked me to to cut out a few parts and like kind of redo out. them yeah so ah just as we get out here too there would be a beautiful view of the volcano what is it with my luck with this volcano and it clouding over you when you came last time it was it was sunny for like a day where you got all of your shots yep and then for the rest of it, it's just pouring rain yep I the, basically that the majority of that documentary happened in a day. You know, we say in Japanese, ame o toko, so you bring the rain with you, you're like a rainy boy. Yep, <laughs> that, that is a hundred percent. But we got lucky this time. Up until this morning, it was showing that the weather for the time that I was here was going to be all rain. But yeah, the gentleman said that uh, I will paraphrase to protect his phrasing. He didn't like his phrasing. Okay. He said that, you know, as humans, we have a natural sense of what's dangerous and what's not. Right. People can sense when something's dangerous. Yeah. Unless that part of you is broken. <laughs> He's like, to choose to live on an active volcano means that something is broken. <laughs> it's like, it's like you've been desensitized. And then I, he's like, you know what? That might have been a little the harsher way to say it than I want. So then he was like, I just don't think they feel the sense of danger. Uh, was, so. he, was he not a resident on the... On the no, 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 no. Uh, he actually, he runs a cow farm. Really? On Sakurajima, yeah. But oh, so he chooses not, not a, to live he, there. He chooses not to live there. He chooses not to live there. Actually, Norm, we're, we're really close to the Sakurajima ferry port. Yeah. If you want to go check that out. Let's go. It might be a good place to, to yeah. Let's uh... So, yeah, usually from this park here, 
uh, you can see Sakurajima and it, it it's hard to capture this on video so I implore you guys to come here and see it yourself but the just the awe-inspiring size of the volcano when you look at it especially on a clear day it makes you feel small it makes you feel like I am just this little speck on this rock moving through space and I mean nothing <laughs> it really puts you in your place and when it erupts, which Norm hasn't been able to see a big eruption yet, and I hope no. he gets to see one on this trip, like the, the, the smoke cloud is so large and moving, it actually breaks your brain. You go, that shouldn't happen. And you're just looking at it, and you can't do anything but just stop and watch it. And especially when it makes a static charge lightning inside the cloud. Yeah, yeah. Just like, you're like, what are you doing? Like, you're already a volcano, now you have lightning? <laughs> like, like, what are you doing? You know, it's kind of funny because the last time that I came out and I was working on the documentary, Mitch was so excited by the idea of potentially getting to see the lightning within the clouds. Yeah. And we had even talked to a gentleman who makes the yogayaki plates uh, that are used for cooking and hot yoga and all these other stuff. And he said that, oh yeah, you get to see lava coming out sometimes at night, you get to see the uh the lightning happening inside of the clouds and it's just really and truly beautiful and you know what i don't know about you but i'm actually feeling like we we, we can just jump on the ferry <laughs> that's fine with me let's do it the ferry if you want. so the port is right over here and i figure you know what if we've come this far you might as well get the full experience of jumping on the ferry and seeing what it's like to head over to sakurajima We'll take a peek at the ferry as well. There are open air decks, so we don't really need to go or stay inside. You can get a coffee. You can get a coffee. You can get a coffee on the ferry. So, yeah. uh, one quick thing that I, you, you kind of showed in the behind the scenes a little bit, like that little poster of me like stuck on the wall of the ferry. <laughs> I so was just I wanted, gonna talk I about I want to talk about that. So there's actually, on all the ferries, there's a uh, restaurant in the ferry where you can eat udon uh -huh. and it's kind of like the soul food of Kagoshima. Like when people go like to Tokyo to live or whatever and when they come back to Kagoshima, it's like the thing that they want to do. Okay. They, they get on the ferry and they just look at Sakurajima, they enjoy the beauty of the bay and they eat the, the udon on the, on the ferry. It's like huh. the soul food of Kagoshima. So the soul food isn't the McDonald's over no, there? No, no, no. Although that is a very conveniently located McDonald's, I'm not going to lie. But like, the udon on the ferry is just so good. And uh, I actually, for television, got to work there for a day. Um, and it was super fun. And then, what, for whatever reason, they were so excited about me working there for a day. And they put my poster on all the ferries. <laughs> so like, I get like a, a message in my email, like daily, of people taking pictures of it and sending it to me. So, yeah. yeah, actually, I put it in the, the behind the scenes, right? Yeah, it's in the behind the scenes. So one day on the ferry over to Sakurajima, I decided to try this udon because it is the quintessential thing that you have to do when you get on the ferry. And I, uh, I was sitting right near the door, otherwise I may not have even noticed it. <laughs> and I can't believe you found it as well. I just look up and right in front of me is Hello Michi. <laughs> so. Yeah, that was the name of the, the, the television corner. It was like, hello, hello, meet you, where I'd go out and meet people and like hang out with them for a day. Okay. And so we did, oh man, they made me do so many dumb things. <laughs> the worst was they made me go to a katsuobushi factory, which is like the, if you ever eaten Japanese food before, it's a little fish yeah, yeah, yeah. put on top that move. I had to like help the factory workers make that. When I came back, uh -huh. I smelled so much like fish that even though I took three showers, I still stank like fish. Wonderful. And then they're like, oh, this is great television. <laughs> <laughs> you know what really threw me off the first time that I got on the ferry? Yeah. So the Sakurajima ferry, you don't have to pay until you get to the Sakurajima side. Uh, you just drive on. And I wasn't prepared for that in any way. <laughs> and so I had originally shot this like scene that was like, did did I, did I get a free ferry? Did I get a free ferry? And then <laughs> I got... Steal the ferry? And then I got over there and then paid. And then you know what? I'm gonna jaywalk. If you guys are calling the cops, now is the time to do it. I'm doing the illegal stuff. The evidence is right here on the video. Wonder what the fine for jaywalking is. I think it's a, a stern talking to. The stern talking to, eh? <laughs> I also kind of like the ferry port building as well. 
So this was made during the bubble, uh, where they had excess amounts of taxation and money to spend, where they made everything out of brutalist concrete, uh -huh. which is important because, you know, it's seismically active here. So, that, you know, they want them to last. But the thing about concrete is it actually doesn't last forever and you have to take care of it. Uh -huh. And the government's really bad at that. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, so this is the area here, you have the NHK building over there that has a, what's called a Joho camera, which is a, uh, it means information camera. Okay. It's basically a camera that's trained on Sakura Jima 24 hours a day. Okay. And so whenever something happens, then they can take a, you know, they have video of it. And mm. actually all of the local news uh, stations do that. Okay. So in this, this little like, like, I don't want to, I, I don't know what they call this area, like a shopping center or whatever. You got the ferry port, you got NHK news, and you also have the aquarium. Okay. And so. I, like there's a room in the aquarium where you can look out on the bay and the volcano and huh. there's like this really actually sweet little like placard in there that tells the kids that visit to take care of the ocean. Uh-huh. So yeah, it's kind of cool. There we go. So, uh, another quick fact about the ferry is you can rent it. Oh yeah, you were telling me that you can just rent out the entire ferry. Yeah, you can just say, hey, can we have a ferry for like five hours? And so some of the local bar owners decided that that was going to be a great idea to make a giant like party on the ferry. Uh -huh. And so they did it for about four years and it was called High Panic and it was like the most fun I've ever... Get a uh, <laughs> so like, uh, so we had this giant uh, party on the ferry that we're about to get on. Because uh -huh. um, they have like the area where you can park, park, uh -huh. three floors of that. And so they put DJs on it, everybody got completely crazy and drunk. And then wow. they put the ferry in the middle of the bay, in front of the volcano, and just spun it around for four hours. That is spectacular. <laughs> it was hilarious. Just, I think it's, I actually wonder how many ferries they have in total because it runs every 15 minutes, it runs 24 hours, even I think, what is it, after midnight until 5 a.m., it still runs every 30 minutes. Yes. Like, it doesn't stop. So, actually, um, you know, because uh, parking is so expensive in Japan um, that a lot of people actually just live on the, on the well, an island. It's technically no longer an island, but uh -huh. on the volcano. And then they just ferry over to the city, work in the city, and then ferry it back. And it's cheaper than, like, having a car and, like, in, you know, in the city. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that does happen. And um, great timing, Warren. This particular ferry is actually my favorite, the Cherry Queen. It just, it looks very New Orleans. Yeah, the culture here is very influenced by other places. And oh. so, yeah, they do look kind of like Louisiana ferry style, Mississippi <laughs> style. So to take a peek at the ferry itself, this is the, the docked ferry at the moment. So the DJ booth would be there, oh. and then every, the bar would be here, and then just like debauchery. Just debauchery. <laughs> Quite the vocabulary choice. Just pure debauchery. Yeah, it was pretty fun. But we did it in the afternoon, so you could... And then there was fireworks on the ocean as well. What? They just, like, they just did it. They did it all. Wow. There we go. Let's head up a deck. You know, I'm just going to ask you a question. When you were driving here yeah. in Kamashima, because you spent the whole week with a giant SUV, did yeah. you find it, like... Weird to drive in Kamishima versus like Tokyo or other urban areas? Actually, no, it was pretty easy to drive. Um, I would say, as per Japan standards, it felt pretty normal. I don't think I really felt anything different. Because uh, you were talking about how many Kyushu ferries you've had to take. Like, yeah. We do like our ferries here. I really do. I, I do. I know Kyushu also does, but I also do. Like again, this is just adding to my list of many, many ferries that I've taken. I think if we head around the other side, we might be able to see Sakurajima. Now, one of the things that I'm kind of hoping we might get lucky enough to see on this live stream is out here in the bay, there's a family of dolphins that lives there. Wow, the volcano's clearing up. Wow, you, you lucked out. The hay little looking nice we got less haze you know what can we go up a, a deck higher is this I the highest we go there's two styles of berries and this one only has this deck okay it's not the it's not the cherry so for this particular ferry here 
Before it gets going, I want to give you guys a bit of a walkthrough on the inside, but living right in the bay here is a family of dolphins. And when I took the ferry over to the volcano last time, I was lucky enough to see the dolphins playing around in the water and it was quite an experience. But what we're going to do now is we're going to head on into the inside for a second. We're going to, we're going to take a little bit of a walk through the inside. And as I do this, just for the respect of everybody in there, we're going to take a short break from talking, but we'll just do a full walk through in silence so you can see what it's like inside. Mitch's picture was right there. We get the one ferry that doesn't have a Mitch picture. We we talked it up so much. It's because we talked it up. <laughs> and there it is there, heading over to Sakurajima right now. It can be pretty hard to tell sometimes what's clouds and what's volcanic smoke. So on the Nintendo 64 version of Zelda, there's like a little cloud. Definitely possible. I'm loving the fishing going on over here. So there's actually a one up that on that on that levee out there. People will actually get a charter boat to boat out there in the morning, uh. and then they'll just fish from the levee all day, and then wow. come back like later on when the boat comes. Wow. Yeah, and I've actually been on that seawall. It is the most vertical inducing experience of your life. Because the whole <laughs> ocean is moving around you, and you feel like you're on a boat, but you're actually on land. It's super crazy. So. A little known fact is that Mitch had actually jumped out to help grab a bit of extra drone shots for me before I came down, including one of the opening shots for the documentary where the camera pans up towards the drone. And he came out to this <laughs> like seawall, levee if you will, to do it. Now, as we are on the ferry, things may get slightly windier. So bear with me on the audio if it gets a little messy. You can see, Kagoshima city back here. Let's go take a peek at the city and then walk down towards the volcano and hope that we'll get to see. I'm just still waiting. I'm just still waiting for the the dolphins. So about that family of dolphins, they're permanent residents in the bay because we have so much fish here. Okay. And they just they just lived here for like 20 or 30 years or something like that. They just they just permanently live here, which is weird for dolphins. Wow. Yeah, and so it's kind of like one of the attractions. You can, you can uh, uh, get a boat, take out the bay, and they go look for the dolphins. So they have dolphin viewing boats just to, <laughs> just to go out and see the dolphins. Then. So a little fact about the sea wall, I think this is the right one. On the other side of it, it should be written Kagoshima. Okay. And I always wonder why that's written there and who's it for. Uh. So I think it's this wall. If it's not, then, you know, sorry, but I'm pretty sure it's this wall. Wouldn't that be for like sailors coming in to know what port they're arriving at? No, it's the one over there. I lied. So it's that one over there, but it's just written on the walls. So it says Kagoshima. I'm just like, why is it there? Huh. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, you can get on that wall and it's super dangerous. 
And it's like, super dangerous. It's super dangerous. It's like you, it doesn't look like it from here, but it's a good two stories off. Uh. And then while you're on it, it's I, I'm telling you because we went out to, to fly the drone. I was just sitting there like, don't let me fall in the water. Don't let me fall in the water. <laughs> let me like give you a little quick fact over here. So again, excuse the wind, guys. So on this side, you can see Senga. Okay. Uh, uh, owned uh, garden, which uh -huh. is uh, those brown roofs over there. Okay. And next to it is that little beach area that's called Iso Beach. Uh huh. And there's an elementary school that every year swims from that beach to the volcano. What? Yeah. Why, like the kids? The kids. The kids the on kids. the elementary school from swim. that beach right there across the, the the bay to the volcano every year. What? And, How? And there's also a competition uh, near that as well that when the adults do it, and I've. Wanting to participate, but I don't have the guts. But I'm going to one of the, one of these days. I guess, it, as you said, it's only like a, a three-kilometer swim. But yeah, but it's, still three kilometers for elementary. School. What? Yeah, and I think they also do it in, in when it's not so warm as well, so it's kind of cold. That is crazy. Now, for those who are probably wondering, are there sharks sharks in the bay? There are small sharks in the bay. Okay. But there's never been an incident, supposedly, of the kids being injured or whatever during that event. So. Wow. Yeah. Mind you, the, the ironic thing is, we were talking when I was shooting the documentary that during the 1914 eruption, that the majority of Death. deaths, I was gonna say loss of life, yeah. <laughs> let's go right for it, <laughs> was people who tried to swim across. So has it just become like a cultural thing? Like you guys are gonna need to someday know how to I swim this? I actually don't know how, how back that goes, how far back that goes. Uh. I know that they, there's a couple of uh, elementary schools and junior high schools and high schools that have like super athletic challenges them in them in, Ka in Kagoshima because Kagoshima was known, you said it in your documentary as uh, the area of pirates and it was, but it was also the area of the warriors because the, the guys here were big because they ate a lot of like meat because they got all this meat from the European countries like you know cows and pork and stuff like that so they were giants and they were known for being tough so they had all these like displays of how tough they are like there's the, the world largest tug of war event in the north of the prefecture right now. wow yeah <laughs> that's pretty awesome so again since we are on the boat it's going to be somewhat windy but we are approaching the volcano now so let's go take a peek Again, bear with the wind. I'm still so determined to find these dolphins. this but I never succeed I, oh, 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 I give up <laughs> ah. okay so there's something over on the other side that Mitch wants to show us so sometimes you know it's classified as a geo park which means it's a federal like protected land and on the logo there's actually the, the Sagarajima mountain with the face on it but if you look in the water there's another little face in the water and the reason that is because there's actually two volcanoes in the bay. There's one, there's one, there's actually three. There's two here, and one's dead, the other one's active. And then there's one over there in the water, underneath the water. And it erupts just like this volcano, but when it erupts, it erupts underneath the water. So it comes up to the, to, to the surface, like methane gas and ash and stuff like that, as little bubbles. Yeah, yeah. So we, when I talked to the volcano expert, Mr. Fukushima, in the documentary, he said that somewhere out in the bay here is an area that only during an eruption has bubbles coming up. And I said, do you think I'd be able to take a boat out and capture it? And he said, you want to capture the bubbles? <laughs> <laughs> and I instantly regretted my thoughts. I was like, you know what? Maybe capturing the bubbles doesn't work. You know what? <laughs> Let's, I really want to. So close. So a little historical lesson. Uh, there's 
almost always a submarine parked in here. Okay. And the reason for that is, is so weird. I don't know if this is true. According to Wikipedia, it's true. Like during, According to Wikipedia, it's true. <laughs> during, I forgot how many years ago it was, but it was like like maybe a lifetime ago. Like a submarine from North Korea okay. came near Kagoshima and kidnapped a girl. What? Yeah, yeah, it's like the most random story. I, 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 I can't promise this is true, but it's on Wikipedia. And okay. so ever since then, there's been like local tales of like like North Korean submarines, and then there's usually a submarine in here like pinging for submarines. Wow. And you're like, I don't know if that's true or not, but it's really crazy if it is. I will tell you right now that the live chat on this here video is most certainly going to be going nuts Googling to find <laughs> out if there's like... Do you, what do you guys think? Do you think there is a submarine down below us, right down there? It pops up sometimes, and when it does, it's just like this black because they're black colored, right? So yeah. you can't see them. And it's just like this black void in the middle of the bay. It looks huh. really crazy. So there is a submarine. Yeah, there's a Japanese yeah. submarine here usually. But um, Actually, speaking of military really quick, on the other side of the peninsula, we're going right now where the volcano huh. is, there's uh, an Air Force base. Uh, okay. We were talking about airplanes before. And so you can actually go out there and see air shows and stuff like that. And the Air That's Force cool. base and the rocket launching facility, they're all kind of like tied together. And I think I found the, the perfect spot for us in terms of wind. And as we come around here, we're going to have a beautiful view of the volcano. And we'll take a little bit of a walk here once we get out so you can see what the area directly around Sakurajima Station looks like. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it, but right up there, there's a little bit of a um, an observatory point up on the mountain. It's where I got some of my initial drone shots and it is said to be one of the highest points that you can actually go up on the mountain that's a public point there is a wow look at that shake there is a slightly like seriously you're going into shallower water there is a slightly higher point up that you can go yeah what are we looking at you can see the little bunker right there yeah 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 you got so many great shots of those there were so many all over the island there is a slightly higher point up the mountain that you can go however number one when you get up to the very top it's fenced off because it's one of the monitoring stations and number two something that didn't make it into the vlog is i actually ended up kind of running away from that area because when i got up there a white luxury car oh, from like yeah. the 80s with black tinted windows pulled up right beside me didn't roll down his windows didn't stop his engine just pulled up right beside me like within a meter of where i was standing and like I like looked in and I waved and everything. The guy just stared at me for a good 30 seconds and then drove down the road and parked. Do you think he was gang affiliated? I have no idea what it was. All I know is I'm up on a mountain alone and this doesn't feel safe. So we're gonna go <laughs> ahead and move on. Mind you, everybody else I met was really nice. Um, another, so the cat lady. Cat lady, my favorite. And cat lady I think was quite possibly everywhere. Now you can't see the volcano. Yeah. The uh, the cat lady, as soon as I walked up, one of the first things she said is, do you play shamisen? Why? And I was like, what? Well, you do, but did she know yeah. you? Yeah, and I was like, yeah, and she's like, I've seen you on TV. Really? Because well, I've been on TV for playing shamisen probably four, five different times, at least once, twice, with the Yoshida Brothers. Uh, TV Tokyo, I did the, the New Year's opening special for their New Year's special. And uh, let's take a look down along this side. And so she was like, yeah, I, I recognize you. you. You got different clothes. I'm like, how did you, uh, how, how? Man, that lady was a godsend. I love her, her interview. Actually, everybody that you interviewed, including the guy that we took a team to translate what he was saying. He that, was probably my favorite. What did you, what was his title? Cool glasses guy or something like that? Yeah, cool dude. Yeah, cool dude. He, like, his Japanese. I don't know how you got through that interview. Like. When you showed me the video later, I was like, what is he saying? <laughs> to be honest, a lot of his interview, that's another question I got a lot of, is like, how much of that did you understand? Uh, and I would say that I understood next to none of it. I'd say that in that sense, I'm very average. Because you sent it to Kagoshima locals for me who had no idea, we, right? You sent it to me and I was like, uh, I, I need help. And then so then I got locals and like it went hand to hand to hand. Uh, and finally a group of Japanese, uh, lo Kagoshima locals translated to English with me. And so, basically, I just kept moving forward with the questions I wanted to ask and responding to his cadence more than anything uh, else. So, because the cadences are there, you know what I mean? The, 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 the. 
So this is interesting. These little walkways that attach themselves to the boat, they're in these giant hydraulics because of the tide. When okay. the tide comes in and out, the, the, they'd have to like level itself to the boat. Okay. I didn't even notice that last time. Good yeah, catch. That's really interesting. So where do you want to go, Norm? You're the pro on the volcano. Uh, I guess I am now. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll uh, take a peek at right around the station because I think that's interesting. Okay. And then maybe head down to Round Rock Beach. Okay, cool. So, we are just about docked here. How many of those rocks did you take, by the way? Uh, three. Three. One of each color. And there's actually a shrine up here yeah, yeah, yeah. that I did not get a chance to go, go to. And I have 13 minutes left. So... Beach or shrine? You pick. Let's do the shrine. Alright, let's do it. It's the one thing here on Kagoshima or Sakurajima that I didn't get to do. So alright, let's... Give me a second, I'm gonna catch this uh, going down. So I'm gonna try not to drop the camera. Once we are properly docked, this here will connect 12 minutes and 45 seconds left on this memory card. There we go. And then it's actually, you'll notice that when we got on, we didn't pay. So when we get off here, that's when we pay. And my favorite part is I can just pay with my Suica card. It feels so weird Coming to back. be back on Sakurajima so soon after completing the documentary. Can I make a comment about the comments on that documentary? Sure. They were so good. You know, YouTube comments are usually like a dumpster fire. But the comments <laughs> on that documentary were amazing. Like, I enjoyed just reading through all of them. You really captivated, like, like the audience. And you really, I think, like, the, you're... The way that you displayed Sakurajima, I think, was very, very true. Like, I think that you accurately displayed, like, the people here, the culture here, the history. And, like, you can see it in the comments. People really liked it. Wow, thank you. It's a good documentary. And the behind the scenes was fun, because I was in it. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the shrine that I was talking about is over there. And in response to the comments, I would say, quite honestly, just a lot of really good people were watching that video, and I got graced with a lot of Kagoshima locals. There we go. That's the underwater volcano right there. <laughs> Welcome to Sakurajima. So now this is the part where we pay, right? Yes. Oh. Mitch is being kind enough to grab both so that I can do the camera work. Thank you, Mitch. Really appreciate that. And so... There we go. Come out here. And the shrine is actually just around the corner up here. So there's a parking lot once you get out of here that's just beyond the convenience store down there. The and convenience store. Yes. You can see this building here and there's a parking lot there where you can park for free. And so... Weird, right? In Japan, you never find free parking. No, it's so rare. Quick fun fact about that parking lot. Uh, I had a friend who parked his car there every single Friday uh. until Sunday every week with his doors unlocked and his keys to the ignition. He did it for an entire year and no one ever did anything to his car. It's amazing. <laughs> you can see that there was like several cars there that had like flat tires that had grown moss around <laughs> them and like they'd just been there for absolutely forever. So... Now that we are right on the volcano, as soon as we uh, get out of here, you should be able to see evidence of all the, the volcanic ash here. This actually isn't that much. There's like a, a small pile of it over here. So to give you a hint of what it, it looks like, it, it's really just like a, a fine black sand. I go like that and boom, it doesn't even stay on my head. It's less of an ash and more of a sand for sure. The weird thing about it is when you see it now, it's, it's black, but when it uh. first falls on the ground in mass, it's actually kind of like a shimmery white. Really? And then when you disturb it, it turns black. I don't know why. Huh. 
<laughs> so this here is the shrine that I never got to visit. On the very last day, I got a 10 minute break in the rain and I was close enough by that I was actually able to fly the drone over it and see now that's a ton of volcanic ash right there. I was actually able to fly the drone over this space and take a look at it, but then the rain picked up quite a bit and I wasn't, able actually, wasn't actually able to come. And this is a space that I wanted to put in the documentary but figured it would probably look a lot better on a day like today. Where it's sunny and you can see. Than it would <laughs> in the rain. Can you make a comment about the cats? How many cats did you encounter on the volcano? All the cats. I encountered all the cats. All the cats. There was no limit to the number of cats that I encountered <laughs> while I was... Oh my god. It's a lot steeper than it looks. <laughs> while I was here on Sakurajima. This is actually just a nice little space. And I feel like this connects to something as well because I've seen people come up here and then just not come back down so so as you know all shrines have gods or demigods in them and this shrine in particular is very popular I mean all shrines are popular during New Year's but a lot of people from the city come over here because they feel like shrines on the volcano huh. have a certain like power because of the volcano okay <sighs> Yeah. We're gonna work yeah. out today. We, uh, we've done quite a bit of walking here. Here we are. So this is the Chinese influence you can see with the dragon. Uh -huh. uh, in Kagoshima, there's a, actually a lot of Chinese influence. Okay. Um, as probably most people know, uh, J Japanese culture is kind of an amalgamation of other cultures as well, like mm -hmm. most cultures are. And so a lot of things, including the, the kanji system, comes from China. And so you see with the dragon here, and some of the architecture here comes from China. I gotta, I gotta commend you. We got up that hill. I was exhausted. I'm like, yeah, I'm just gonna take a 10 second break. <laughs> You're keeping it going. <laughs> All right. Oh, maybe we can go up there. I haven't been up there. See a magical staircase. It's gonna be an adventure for both of us. To the maybe clouds. We can see the city. That'd be cool. Oh. I'll say it again. I most certainly picked the wrong backpack for this adventure. <laughs> I'm behind you, and I feel sorry for you. It's huge. <laughs> <laughs> you wanna, can I? Can I? Sure. So look at this guy. You got all your Tokyo lens. You got all your lenses in there. <laughs> I got everything in here. Okay, I've let got me. At least three cameras in here. So there's that. And then I've got all my clothing for the week. And my ability to knock myself. Wow. Oh wow. This is a cool little spot. I love the birds of prey. They're always like... Trying to eat your drone? <laughs> they were actually really nice! Not a single one went after my drone the whole time I was here. I got lucky. Really? Yeah. Can I make a really quick comment before you run out of batteries? That, yeah. You see that little stepping staircase? You might not be able to see in the video, but yeah, it's like yeah. right there. That's actually... Um, they have these little pathways that they've like carved out of the mountain in case there's a pyroclastic flow oh. or a, a landslide and it directs them away from the people. <sighs> yeah. wow. We are both out of all the breath. So yeah, and actually you can, if you look at some of the drone shots from the, the videos that I did here, you can see them carved into the side of the mountain there. And there's a dam on the other side of the, uh, the volcano that you can't get to, but is pretty much a dam for lava, not for water because there's no natural water flow. But also, okay, well that memory card said it had four minutes left and just <laughs> filled right up. And see, look at all this. Ah, uh, okay, it does kind of get dusty when you kick it. I can see why like people would be concerned, but but it's not all that different from, I guess, living near the beach. Or living in a desert like I used to live. Yeah. I mean, like, honestly, like, I have a dust allergy and uh. I have no problem with volcanic ash for whatever reason. Okay. So, I mean, uh. I don't know. It might be dangerous, but again, the, if you look at the life expectancy of the people living on the island, it's the exact uh. same as everybody else, so. Like, they don't, they don't die or anything, so. They don't die here. <laughs> they're immortal. Yeah, I mean, they're, you know, because Japanese, they live so long. Um, I do feel both bad and grateful to Mitch, who I said, you know what? Let's take a 20, 30 minute walk through the city. And somehow we ended up on Sakurajima. So thank you so much for humoring me on that. No, I really you know appreciate what? I love it. it when you come to Kagoshima. You always make great content <laughs> here. I can't wait until this drops, man. I was hoping, just hoping 
that we might get a little something, but no luck. She never does, she never performs when you want her to. No, no. Only when you're like, if you, there's a, they have rock concerts and stuff on the volcano. Uh, and uh, like, it's always when we have the rock concert that it rains just tons of ash on you when you don't want it. <laughs> yeah, I guess I don't want the ash. But what I do want is to say thank you guys so much for joining this stream. It's been an absolute blast. If you're new, don't forget to turn on all the notifications for the channel so that I guess I said stream, but this one was more of a, a video so I could share it in 4K. But don't forget to turn on the notifications so that you will be ready every time a live stream or one of these video pops up and you can hang out in the live chat with us or experience it live thank you that is really soft ash thank <laughs> you so much to mitch for walking around with me for no problem uh, well over an hour and taking a random ferry with me we are probably going to head back to kagoshima on the ferry pretty soon i hope the rest of your day is beautiful and you guys know i will talk to you again real soon let's finish off with a view of the volcano there Hey, Norm, you want to get some uh, ash ice cream? Is that a thing? Yeah, it's a thing. Let's do it. Wait, wait. Ash ice cream is a thing? It's a thing. Oh, my. Thing. Let's go. Okay, we got to get some ash ice cream. <laughs> okay, there's the volcano, guys.